Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and in Dye Pot PS number 17 I dyed this beautiful beautiful green yarn but there is a problem. Somehow in the process we ended up with these random light patches which honestly could have been a cool feature if it was balanced through the skein but it's not. Um, I still have no idea what could have ruined the yarn. It seems that this bleached somehow uh, during the steaming process, which doesn't make a ton of sense because it only happened to one of the skeins. There must have been something on there that caused this to happen. I took a snip of this yarn and a Clorox wipe, the same kind that I use to clean the pot sometimes to remove excess dye. The wipes are bleach free, so I rubbed this um, all over just like a snip of the yarn to see if it would remove some color. I didn't try heating it, but that color seems to be like unchanged. So I honestly don't know what happened. I would think that these were caused by a dry spot in the yarn, except for the fact when I removed it, the way they were clustered together very much looked like holes that could have come from the steamer basket. So. I'm perplexed. I've never seen anything like this happen. And, well, I'm also really disappointed. But we are going to turn our lemon into lemonade and we're going to over dye this today. Um, sort of doing the original vision for that project. I am going to pre soak this saturated green yarn in some plain tap water for um, at least 30 minutes to get nice and saturated. Now you can see that we have some slight bleeding, which is slight compared to the depth of color that we have on our yarn, but it is some bleeding. If you go back and watch the video, I was able to rinse it for the water to be clear, things soaked in the water for a while, um, but this is just an example to show that with really vibrant saturated colors, bleeding can happen, and it's worth doing a soak test um, or a bleed test before you mix a saturated color with a lighter color, whether it's hand dyed or commercial dyed. The yarn base is Knit Picks Felici, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I squeezed out most of the water and added a zip tie onto the yarn. And I've tried to arrange it so that we can expose as many of these white spots as possible. I'm probably gonna miss some, but we're going to give this a shot. And now I'm going to add an unspecified amount of our pre-soak water back into it. And my goal here um, is to get us in a low immersion type situation. Uh, we're like medium to low immersion. And, you know, I still think that it was the pot that did something, but when it's really saturated, you can't see those spots really well. So again, I don't really know, but I'm gonna turn on the heat and we're gonna add some acid. I'm gonna go ahead and add one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar. I am all suited up and wearing a respirator, uh, safety goggles, and gloves. Now today we are going to over dye this yarn using our mystery speckles that we happen to know are mostly navy. Um, and I am taking this and it honestly probably does not look like very much right now. Um, but I'm taking this and just layering it on top of the green. And the goal here is not only to try to cover up those patches that we know were white, even though since I can't see them, <laughs> it's hard to know exactly where they are. Um, but since we're doing the technique, and I'm going heavy in with this powder, since we're doing a technique that is over dyeing and is going to lead to a lot of different like color variation over the whole skein of yarn as a whole, um, that should make some of these patches 
less problematic. Because if I was just going to over dye with green, unless I was going to really just hand paint in the, the areas that needed it, um, if I was if I was just going to try to touch that up, it might still stand out from the rest of the yarn. But I'm doing just sort of this layer of navy on top. And it's hard for even me to see the placement. Um, but there's plenty of the sky. There's a few other colors in there as well. Um, but all right, I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for uh, 10 minutes and then we'll come back. Let's move this around. I have no idea uh, where those white patches are. Um, oh, I was like, oh, there's one, but I can see a little tie. And actually, there is one right there. So what I'm going to do, as I'm prepping to flip this over is I'm just grabbing a little bit of powder there and poking that on and okay it's warm but not so hot and so I just rinse my fingers off and then add a little color um but yeah if I see any uh white patches that is totally what I would do. But I definitely want more color coverage on here anyway. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to look completely navy in the end or if we're going to see some of these green undertones, but I think it is going to be really, really beautiful. And honestly, just sort of the original vision uh, for the Dye Pop PS episode. I just liked my, oh, that's a lot of dye, my saturated colors enough that I decided to go ahead and just leave it. And wow, I really cannot see um, the, the green is so dark when wet that I honestly cannot tell always where like a speckle might be landing. I think that visually we will see it uh, once the yarn is dry, but uh, this layering colors like this is definitely new. I don't think I've tried speckling on something quite so dark. Okay, I'm definitely going to be moving it around, I think, probably one more time, at least. I'm going to leave any of this dye behind. Just sort of rinsing off my fingers. <laughs> uh, if the water is really hot, definitely don't do that. I think that the uh, nitrile does give me some protection. But, anyway, I'm going to leave this for 10 minutes. And then we will give it another check. I am maskless for a moment as I flip this yarn again to sort of mop up this residual color. Um, you can see that that color is actually absorbing fairly quickly once it can come into contact with some yarn. It all sometimes you just need to move things around a little bit. Now what I am going to do is actually turn off the heat. Um, I'm going to let this cool down, and I'm not done dyeing it yet. I still, there's still areas where I want to add this navy to, but I do want to let it cool down. And the reason why I want to let this cool down is that I want to check for those white spots. Um, and I have a feeling I will be able to see that better if I can squeeze out a lot of the dye so it looks, in the water, so it looks a bit drier. Um, it's a little bit warm, like I can touch it, but I don't really want to squeeze it yet. So I'm just going to set this aside, um, and then we can take a closer look and decide where we want to add more color. This is not something that I would bother with at all if I weren't worried about trying to find some white patches and cover them up in some kind of way. Um, I think normally I would just move it around and in the pan try to decide where I wanted more color. but. Anyway, um, I will be back once this is cool. 
I squeezed out most of the water from this and with the exception of around a tie I do not see any white patches so I think and hope that I covered them all. The yarn itself also looks pretty balanced. It's pretty good. There's some dark patches and then patches where it's less heavy. Um, I do want to heat it a little longer so I think I'm going to go ahead and place it in here and heat it for about 20 minutes. I am going to add more some more water from that pre-soak and then I'm also going to add some more vinegar here into the pan um, so that way we can uh, absorb as much of this color as possible um, and make sure that it's completely set because it is so saturated. All right. This extra heat was purely, purely precautionary, um, but I'm now going to remove the yarn and you can see that we have cleared that dye bath. So, um, I'm now going, well, I'm doing sort of like one final little check. We'll check it once it's dry and if we see something we can always dye it again. But I'm now going to go and set this aside to cool so we can wash it. Let's wash our pretty yarn. It's got some plain cool tap water here. The color is so deep and saturated. It's really hard to get a sense of the character of this yarn. But I do know that the underlying green is, was fairly bright to begin with. And Oof, we've got this beautiful, uh, I think the camera is overexposing it a little bit, but it's this deep green with these dark navy splotches and speckles. Really, really beautiful. Um, the water is looking pretty clear. The bottom of this pan is stained. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some soap. Use some clear dish soap. Okay, we are seeing some bleeding. Um, that is absolutely some bleeding that we are seeing here. I am going to go ahead and wash this a few more times off camera um, to see if we can get that bleeding to stop. Um, it is still, let's say, slight bleeding, but definitely less than it was before. And don't be afraid to add a nice healthy splash of vinegar and to just let things soak for a little bit if you are seeing just a lot of bleeding. And I'm seeing a little bit of bleeding, but I don't like bleeding, so we're just gonna soak with some vinegar for a little bit. You can always soak for longer, but it is always encouraging to see that there is no color with the vinegar. My tap water does run slightly acidic, so if you see bleeding a lot, it could be worth checking uh, your water just to see. And always runs on cold. Uh, acid dyes will bleed uh, with hot water. Okay, this is looking good now. All right, I'm gonna rinse it a few more times, uh, then put it through my spin dryer, and then we'll come back and take a close look at this beautiful yarn. Here is the finished dry yarn. The colorway is really subtle. We have this super deep saturated green with maybe a hint of teal, but it is a pretty true green with navy speckles all over the yarn. And if I flip it over, uh, there are no hints of that white that we were trying to remove, which is wonderful. You can definitely see the navy speckles on this yarn, even though the contrast between the two colors is overall really, really low. Uh, I think that gives this almost a very tonal feel for while it's variegated and there are two different tones. As I started coming and filming these conclusions, I realized it probably could have been beneficial for me to demonstrate how to cover these white patches in a way that would be more consistent with the original colorway. 
Um, and so certainly you could take more and mix a concentrated version of that same color and try to dab that on those paler patches to cover up the white. Um, in this circumstance where I was a little more randomly mixing colors together, it would be pretty hard for me to do, which is why I went for this technique. Well, that and the fact that the original Dipot PS17 Vision was to do something like this um, to show a variegated, extremely saturated kind of colorway. But anyway, I think what we ended up with is absolutely beautiful, and I was able to turn something that had me disappointed into something I love. So anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this bonus early access video. If you want early access videos to the Dipot PS series and ones like this one, uh, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Uh, you can find a link both in the video description and iCard. And yeah, I am just really, really excited by this yarn and how it turned out. And I know that I wanna do this with intent and purpose more in the future. Um, and oof, this is just beautiful. So let me know what you thought in the comments, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will catch all of you soon. Bye.